Hey, so let's composite these three images and resize them for Instagram. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? All right, I've opened up the three images I want. Texture, background, and this image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pre-crop this to Instagram size, which is for a portrait. They like 1080 by 1350. So I again, I chose the crop tool and I chose the four by five because that's the ratio they want. And then I'm actually putting in 1080 pixels wide by 1350 pixels tall. So it gives me the guides. I'll hit, I'll hit enter to lock that in. And let's just uh, see how well it does at figuring this out. I'm gonna duplicate this, Command J, so I'm not working on the original file. I'll hit M for the marquee tool. I'll quickly select this white area, hold down my shift key so I can add to the selection with another marquee draw, still holding the shift key down while I pull this down. And then I'll hit shift delete, whatever method you want to bring up the fill dialog box. And then I'll hit the downward disclosure triangle and I'll choose content aware, click okay. I was like, Shh, Photoshop, bail me out. Let's see how it does. You know, I'd say it, it did a really good job. It's a little weird in this bottom corner and it's got a little weirdness going on up here, but I'll just hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'll hold the alter option key so it turns into a bullseye and I'll say click so it'll source from there and I'll just quickly paint that out while the selection is still active. And then I think I'll do the same thing. I'll alt click right here on this line and paint over here. I don't have to worry about it being over boot because it's only gonna paint in the selected area. And I'll just try to even that out, Command or Control D. So now we have the format ready to go. Now I want to select her. I'll, I'll choose the quick selection tool, which is the fourth one down. And then I'll just paint over her hair with it, her face, her shoulders. Then I'll choose Select and Mask so I can go in and make some passes with the Refine Edge brush. That's found right here, but it's automatically chosen for you whenever you go into the Select and Mask dialog box. And sometimes the Refine Edge and the Selection tools have a hard time with black and white images because they really work better on tonality and color together. And once you've made the selection as much as you want, just go down to Output to New Layer with Layer Mask, click OK. So now she is on top of the layer that we we have turned off. So I'm gonna turn that back on. And the, the reason I'm doing this is I, I want to put in, I want to put in this graffiti wall. Now let's take a look at the angles. That's my texture. Okay, the angle is going down just a little bit, but it's fairly straight, but it's going from left to right down. And this one's going from left to right up. The quick way to fix that if you're gonna stay in Photoshop is come over to the eyedropper tool area and just go down to ruler tool. It's actually a measurement device, but it has this neat feature where if you have a line that's crooked and you want it to be straight, just click and drag and let go and then come up and click straighten layer. And it'll, it'll quickly straighten the, the lines in the layer for you. So I'll click and drag that over to her come inside of it and let go. I'm gonna pull it behind her and then I need to hit V for the move tool so I can pull it up above the line. See, there's so here's the line right here. So let's not get confused by what's going on. I hit the polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to select this because I want to mask out the wall to only fit in this area. And then I'll toggle the wall back on and I'll click add layer mask. And then I'll break the length because the mask needs to say where it's at. But that gives me the freedom to choose. Wait, the there's a bonus. Tip. and I'll click add layer mask, and then I'll break the link because the mask needs to say where it's at. But that gives me the freedom to choose the graffiti, hit the move tool, and now I can pull it down. See how it's behind that mask? And I can kind of pull it wherever I want. If I still need to rotate it, I can hit Command or Control T. And looking at this line right here, I'm gonna hover on the outside corners of my bounding box, and it'll turn into a double rotation arrow, allowing me to click and just rotate the image the direction I want. I'll hit Enter to lock that in. Okay, couple problems. Too sharp of a line. This is way too dark compared to the high key feel of this image. So let's fix the brightness first. Just add a levels adjustment layer. I'm going to clip it to only affect this by alt or option clicking in between the layer. And then I'm just going to grab the midtone slider and pull it way up. Same for the highlight slider because it needs to be blown out a bit. And then I would suggest that it needs to be blurrier because this is the depth of field is pretty shallow falling behind her. So I'll click back on the graffiti layer, go up to filter, down to blur, 
And I'll choose lens blur because it gives the best realistic version of a camera blur. And then adjust the radius and blade curvature to make it as blurry as you want it. Click OK. It render. All right. So that's that's really looking good. I'd say I probably went too far with the white. See how this is kind of a gray and this is too white now. So click back on your levels adjustment and pull the white back until that gray starts to match. See, the grays are starting still high key, but the grays are starting to match better. OK, here's the next problem. Here's a sharp line where I created that mask. So cl click back on that mask we created. In the properties panel, it will open the feather dialog box. And if I pull this over, see how that line just got nice and soft and blurry, kind of integrating the two the way you'd expect. All right, I'll choose the very top layer now. I'm gonna go over and grab my texture. The way to do this is just click on the layer. Even though it's a locked background layer, I can still do it. Drag it up to the tab of the image you want it to be in come inside the image and then let go. So obviously this is a mode of grayscale because it converted the color automatically and that's totally fine. I'll hit Command or Control T, activate free transform, hover outside the corner so that I can get those rotation handles and just click and drag to the rotation I want. And then I'll just scale up, scale down, pull this over and now, if there was something in there that I wanted, you don't have to stay true to the aspect ratio. Just hit the Command T again, Command minus so you see everything. And if you hold the Shift key, you can squish the aspect ratio in case there was some part of the texture you liked that was a little lower or, or something. So choose a blend mode. Find a blend mode that's going to work with the image overall. Oh, I think I like overlay. Command zero to fit back in screen. So a couple things going on. I don't want it to affect her face and her, her body so much. So I'll just add a layer mask. I need to be painting with black since I'm painting on a white mask. So I'll hit X to revert those. Hit B for the brush tool. Look at my opacity. I want to paint it 100%, so I'll hit zero. And I'll just click once on her face. That's 100% removed. Here's the layer mask. Alt or option click to see it. And then I'll click and paint through here. So 100% removed it with it fading out. Now I'll hit four for 40%, make a smaller brush and just do a 40% pass just around the edges of her, just to soften the pattern around her. Because now I want to hit Command or Control J to duplicate the effect of that grunge mask. See how that made everything darker and richer? Do it one more time. That's about as far as I'd go. I might even pull this one back just a little. But there we go. We have a, a an image that is sized and ready for Instagram. To get it out to Instagram, because right now it's a layered PSD file, hit Command Shift S. I want to save the .psd file so I can always come back and edit this at any time in the future. So I'll click Save. Now here, I want to go up to Image Mode mode and I want to convert this to RGB. It's going to present better. Don't flatten as a general rule. So now it's in RGB mode. Even though it's a black and white image, it'll display better on the web. Okay, so since we save this as a ratioed based image, we need to actually change the image size. So come up to image, image size, tap in 1080, and it should automatically fit the 1350. Looks like I'm off by one. I'll leave that. Click OK and zero. So now it's been physically resized to match the pixel requirements of Instagram. I'll hit Command Shift S because now I want to save it as a flattened JPEG without having to flatten it. So it's going to save it as a copy, which is perfect. I definitely need to embed the sRGB profile. Click Save. Between 10 and 12 of quality is 100% fine. So now this image is saved in a folder as a JPEG and a PSD. Now when I go to close this, by hitting out the X, it says, do you want to save this? And typically you, you freak out and you're like, yeah, yeah, I definitely want to save it. You don't. Remember, we just made this image much smaller so that when we resize it for Instagram, so we know we've already saved the .psd. So we don't want to save these changes we've made to this file. Just click don't save. Now go work on your own and post it. Share it. Let's see what you're doing. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> god. Oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.